Cronkite News starts now. Welcome to this Cronkite News Update. I'm Sam Brennan. Last night marked the fifth consecutive night of protests in Arizona in response to George Floyd's death, the unarmed man who died eight days ago while in police custody. It was also the second night a statewide curfew was in effect. Governor Doug Ducey cracked down, issuing the curfew in response to the looting at high-end businesses and clashes between police and civilians over the weekend. We've now learned Phoenix police arrested more than 200 people during those demonstrations. Authorities say those arrested are accused of rioting, unlawful assembly, disorderly conduct, or curfew violations. On Monday, no arrests were made. The curfew will last each night until June 8th. As Arizona is under its third night of a week of 8 p.m. curfews, Scottsdale Mayor Jim Lane says he talked with Governor Ducey about the idea. I did talk to the governor about that. Um, and we were in the process of doing it just for our city. Uh, and then I, I do know that he came out with a seven day uh, statewide, but it's at the discretion in any case. The only thing we did with it, and I did with it specifically, was to make sure that we kept it as confined as possible. We don't want to put any further burden on our population. Uh, you know, they've been shut down for a while, and there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of uh, in some quarters, anger and angst just about that. You've likely seen pictures of damage done by looters and riots, but who is cleaning that up? Some people have taken to social media to volunteer. Isabella Martellero has more. Scottsdale business owners are facing millions of dollars in damage after rioters looted and vandalized the area around Scottsdale Fashion Square Saturday night. While people protested the death of George Floyd around Arizona, the Scottsdale community said these rioters are not associated with that effort. The black community and leadership has indicated to us they have no part in any of this, and as have uh, the major organizations, uh, the NAACP and such, uh, we're in touch with and uh, just confirming that. This was... Uh, Oop, it looks like of uh, agitators who came from outside. People protesting. These were not them. They were not interested in any agenda other than to create damage wherever they could. James Harding, director of sales at Riverton Piano, says he watched the looting of his own store on live TV. Like many other business owners, Harding saw thousands of dollars in damage unfold. They were having the time of their lives, just causing as much damage and havoc as they could. While the police were focusing on the protest and the things that had happened on the front side of the building, on the main street, they were on the back side of this complex wreaking havoc. Despite the millions in damage done to the city, Scottsdale Mayor Jim Lane says the city does not have the funds to financially support the impacted businesses. However, Alicia Porter saw a different way to help out. Thinking, well, I know there's going to be a huge mess tomorrow, and I know that business owners just opened their doors recently and they're gonna take a huge hit from all of this. So I hopped on Facebook and I created the event. Nearly 100 residents showed up early Sunday morning with brooms, trash bags, and generosity. And their efforts have not gone unnoticed. And the next thing I know, I look up and there's maybe 30 people, all different races, all different genders, different age groups. They had kids, they had adults, it's some of the older folks. Everybody was out, most of them wearing masks, out there just trying to help clean up their community and help restore whatever they could to the businesses that were damaged. I think it's really important to show our kids that we do need to come together in times of tragedy and times of need. While Scottsdale residents may fear a repeat of Saturday's destruction, Porter says the community is prepared and ready to help out their local businesses again. Isabella Martellaro, Cronkite News. High school coaches often guide their players on the right ways to approach a game. But coaches can also offer lessons outside the field. Cronkite News reporter Misha Jones talked to two black coaches in Arizona about their perspectives on police brutality and racism, and why all coaches need to take action. Tony Darden, a basketball coach at Mesa High School, hopes change happens soon because he's worried. In recent days, and for years, racism and police brutality targeting black people has triggered protests across the nation. It's just something that, uh, 
I don't think people truly understand that. And uh, I don't know how we can get more people to understand that because it is, it is something that affects our community every day. Darden says he lives in a constant state of anger, sadness, and fear, especially for his loved ones. I have an eight-year-old son. You know, he's rambunctious. You know, he's into sports. You know, he gets an attitude sometimes. He laughs and jokes sometimes. You know, he's just like any other kid. But, you know, he's an anxious kid too. So if somebody says, uh, you know, get to the ground, put your hands up, he might freeze. You never know. According to MappingPoliceViolence.org, Black people made up 24% of those killed by police in 2019, but only 13% of the U.S. population. George Hawthorne, football coach at Mesa Skyline High School, spent 16 years as a commander in the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. He's also ready to see a change. After years of protests, he says it took rioting and looting for some non-Black people to start paying attention but it shouldn't have. But it's not being made up. You know, although you don't see it, you don't see it because you're not the affected population. Know that that person's feelings come from someplace. Let's find out why. Why, why, do, they, why do they feel this way? Hawthorne and Darden both say all coaches need to talk to their players about the impact of racism on Black people. This dialogue should occur with every student because we need empathy from uh, other populations in order for this problem to end. They look up to the coach as far as playing time, as far as guidance in other areas of improvement on the court, on the, on the football field, on the volleyball court. Um, and so that should still be the same when it comes to these issues. Those kids are going to grow up to be, you know, leaders of our society and they're going to be uh, policy makers, decision makers. And you know, we want those kids to understand and have empathy as well. As people across the country push for change, Darden and Hawthorne want to make sure their players and all young athletes are equipped to do the same. Misha Jones, Cronkite News. Discussions from black coaches about race go beyond high school sports. At the college and professional levels, Arizona football coach Kevin Sumlin, ASU football coach Herm Edwards, and Suns head coach Monty Williams have all expressed various messages of pain and calls for unity. Another sports figure is helping out the Floyd family. A member of Floyd Mayweather's production company told ESPN he's covering funeral costs for George Floyd. George Floyd's memorial is scheduled for June 9th, according to the family's lawyer. A spokesperson for Mayweather Promotions told ESPN Mayweather wanted to keep this matter anonymous. Arizona's top school official released guidelines today for reopening the state's K-12 schools. The guidelines include detailed suggestions on how the districts can restart traditional classes after summer break. The document, released by Superintendent of Public Instruction Kathy Hoffman, leaves it up to districts to make those choices. It says school boards should rely on guidance from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to help them decide. Two school districts in Phoenix have voted to change the school week to only four days a week, allowing Friday to act as a deep cleaning day. The 36-page document was released just days after Governor Ducey said he's allowing schools to reopen in August. Well, it isn't what the class of 2020 expected. With the coronavirus leading to a high spike in unemployment, many Arizona graduates are wondering if they'll be able to find work. Cronkite News reporter Nicole Soto shares the outlook of the current job market. Though unemployment was low at the start of 2020, the coronavirus has caused one of the worst job markets Arizona has seen in years. The state's unemployment rate rose from 6.1% in March to 12.6% in April, according to the Arizona Office of Economic Opportunity. Many are accepting their diplomas and looking for work at a time when the future is uncertain. For recent graduate Stephanie Mitchell, finding a job hasn't been easy. I feel like there's not a ton out there, especially for what my degree is in. I'm a sports business major, so I mean, obviously there's no sports going on right now. A new study by ICIMS found that 2020 college graduates were expected to apply to an average of 10 jobs before the pandemic. Now, that number has doubled to 20. 
But despite the increase in applicants, hiring firms are starting to see open positions return. So February, March, you saw the tightening and less positions. Now I'm seeing it grow because people are like, hey, this is not so scary. It's picking up again, and I think we're heading in the direction of the positions being open. Many graduates are now applying for a wider variety of jobs, some below their skill level. Since I also have a business degree, I've kind of looked in just like general business. So doing something related like sales or marketing for a company and then eventually when the sports industry does start picking up, I could try and get back into it. Though this has now become more common, Experts say it's okay to start small. If it's something that will get you to where you want to be, you know, being the lowest man on the totem pole and something that you want to be the highest man on the totem pole later, great idea. Mitchell says she is anxious to be looking for a job at this time, but the support of her peers has kept her going. It sounds weird, but it's almost been kind of cool, like being a part of that because everyone's going to remember like, uh, like the class of 2020. Nicole Soto, Cronkite News. Though the unemployment rate in Arizona has risen, it is still lower than the national rate, which was reported at 14.7% in April. That's it for this edition of Cronkite News. For Arizona news updates throughout the day, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and find us online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org.